Good morning, welcome to the CDDC booth at Mobile World Congress 2016 and uh, we're going to present you a demo for the 5G Crosshold project. Uh, but before going into the details, uh, let, let me introduce myself. My name is Josep Manges, I'm head of the Communication Networks Division at CDDC and together with my colleague Ricard Bilalta, uh, we're going to do a demo of the control plane of 5G Crosshold. But fi what is 5G Crosshold? What's, what's the goal of 5G Crosshold? So 5G Crosshold is about integrating the front hole and the back hole. Um, what's the rationale behind doing that? So up to now what you see is that there are two kinds of networks, the front hole one and the back hole one, which use different technologies, different equipment, they are managed in different ways. Uh, so we want to, to uh, get rid of these inefficiencies and we want to have a single unified network that is capable of serving uh, all the requirements of the flow of both front hull and back hull and at the same time consider all uh, radio functional splits. Um, and how do we do that? We do it with two main things. First one is a unified data plane. Uh, basically this means that we are designing uh, a new uh, frame, the, what we call the cross call common frame, um, which will be able to serve all these needs. And not only the common frame, but we are also designing the devices, the cross call forwarding entities that will switch these frames to handle all, all this heterogeneity of flows. And the second main thing that we are doing in the project is uh, what we call the cross call control infrastructure, which is a unified control infrastructure that uh, takes all these wireless and optical domains, different domains, um, though they all switch the same common frame, and give an end-to-end -end view, a unified end-to-end -end view that exposes an interface to the, to the operator, a single interface through which it can control end-to-end -end all these heterogeneities in uh, all this heterogeneity of technologies and provide this end-to-end -end service on top of it. So, without any further ado, what you will see in this demo is the control plane part. It's a hierarchical control plane with both wireless and optical domains. Each will have its own controller and then a hierarchy, uh, the, the parent controller, we control all this hierarchy and give this end-to-end -end view that we mentioned. And now let's move to the demo with Ricardo Vilalta. Hi, this. I am Ricardo Vilalta from CDTC. Now I will show you the demo from the 5G cross hall that we have prepared in our booth. It's basically about SDN and orchestrating networks. You will see that in this demo we have uh, emulated several data planes, but uh, all the control plane uh, software is running on this on this laptop. Uh, so in several virtual machines. Uh, for the for the emulated data planes, you you see that uh, we have used Mininet, and for the control planes, uh, we are using uh, several SDN controllers and our own SDN orchestrator, as, uh, running as a child or as a parent. This is about hierarchical SDN orchestration, so uh, we have several levels of uh, orchestration, of hierarchy uh, of orchestration. Uh, first, let me show you the screen. Uh, we have. One wireless domain, we have uh, one packet domain uh, controlled by an SDN controller and an optical domain. The optical domain is, control, is controlled by an active stateful PC. Let me show you in the demo. So it's running here. It's a five, a four node uh, optical domain. It's controlled by an active stateful PC with instantiation capabilities. We like to say it's an optical SDN controller. For the packet domain, you can see that we are using a, a standard open daylight for SDN controller. For the wireless domain, we are using Rio, so we don't have a, a script capture. But you can see a child controller. The child controller is taking care of both the optical domain and the packet domain. This is the first SDN orchestration. It's about it's a client orchestrator. You see, this is an, an optical node, this is a packet node, 
these are both orchestrated and we are able to provide end-to-end -end connectivity between these different uh, layers. In this demo, we have done one step higher and we are presenting a hierarchical approach so that all this control, all this orchestrator is able to abstract this network and uh, if this network can be seen as a node in the, for the parent controller. So if you take a look at the parent, all the underlying optical and pattern network is seen as a single node. This is the abstracted node that is representing the whole transport network. In, uh, in this demo, we will provide a connection between the wireless domain and this transport network, and we will see how all the necessary orchestration is performed in order to trigger this end-to-end -end connectivity. So, I will create a call between an input port in the wireless domain and an output port in the transport domain. I need to select first the wireless domain port and then the output port in the transport domain. I will create this connection. The connection has been triggered. The connection has been created. We will take a look at the parent controller. We will see that the connection has been done. So we have connection. Let's see what has happened in the client controller. If we go to the client controller, we see many things. First one, we see that the link has been created. This is a virtual link because we have established an optical connection and this optical connection is being used as a, as a layer 2 connection on the higher domain. So this virtual link has appeared here. We see also the, the connections in the optical domain has been established. This is the optical domain and we see the end-to-end -end connection. This, of course, was uh, performed from the parent controller to the node to the abstracted node and this has been translated into all the necessary uh, commands in the, in, the, in the client orchestrator. So if we take a look at Open Daylight, we are able to see that all the flows have been created, have been generated for the packet domain. This is the source and MAC address that we have configured for our end-to-end -end call and we see that it has established first the optical connection, then we have established all the optical, all the packet flows in the packet domain, and only we have also established the necessary connections in the wireless domain. This is what I wanted to show you today, and thank you very much for your attention.